Number one says, here are the first two terms of a geometric sequence. What are the next three terms? So remember that this word geometric sequence means that we are multiplying by a number, okay? So there's multiplication happening here. So instead of addition, it's going to be multiplication. So two to get to four through multiplication is we multiply each term by two. So then it wants the next um, three terms. So we're going to multiply the previous term times two. So four times two is eight. Eight times two is 16. And 16 times two is 32. So I'll just write down what we did here. Number two, what is the growth factor of each geometric sequence? So the growth factor is the number that you're multiplying by to get the next term. So one times one gives us one. One times one, one times one, one times one. So our growth factor here is one. So what do we do to get from 256 to 128? Okay, so what are we multiplying by? And if you don't know... Okay, you can always take your new number divided by your original number. Okay, so the new number is 128. The original number is 256. Simplifies to 1 half or 0.5. So the growth factor here is um, 1 half. So what do we multiply 18 by to get 54? So again, you can do 54 divided by 18 if you want to, and that will give you the growth factor of 3. Um, in part D, we've got 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.8. So this one has a growth factor of um, 1 tenth or um, 0.1. Okay, now this one, um, the decimal place, we're getting, um, the number is getting bigger each time by a decimal place. So the growth factor here is going to be multiplying by 10. Again, you can also do 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.008, and that would give you 10 as well. Number three, a, po a person owes um, $1,000 on a credit card that charges an interest rate of 2% per month. Complete this table showing the credit card balance each month if they don't make any payments. So um, a growth rate of 2% per month means they're going to owe 2% more. So they're going to owe their initial 100% plus they're going to owe an additional 2%. So each month they owe 102% of the previous month. Okay, so we're going to be multiplying. And again, you could divide these to figure this out if you didn't remember how to do that. So you could do um, the growth factor as 1,020 divided by 1,000. Okay, and this will give you 1.02, which is 102% as a decimal. So we're just going to be multiplying um, by 1.02 each time. And so when we multiply 1,040 and 40 cents by 1.02, we get 1,061.21. When we multiply this by 1.02, we get 1,082.43. Next one, we get 1,104.23. 08. Multiply by 1.02 again and you get 1,126.16. Multiply by 1.02 again and get $1,148.69. So this is if they didn't make payments and didn't get late charges. So after that eight months, you already have $148 in interest being charged. Number four, we have this Sierpinski triangle, and that's where you start with an equilateral triangle, okay, and then you break it into four congruent triangles and remove the middle one. So we can see that we've got four, three are shaded, one is unshaded. Then you take each of these and you do the same thing. So you can see 
here was this um, equilateral triangle split it into three removed the middle here was this one here was this one and so then that's just going to continue happening so complete the table showing the number of shaded triangles in each step and the area so we had one shaded triangle in this first step we have one two three shaded triangles in this next step and now when we figure out the area, we want to think about how many triangles this one was split into. So this one was 256. So if we take 256 and we divide it by 4, okay, we're going to get the area of one of those triangles, which is 64. Okay, so it just wants one of the equal triangles there. So now in this next one, we have three for each of these. So each of these trying each of these shaded triangles gives us three more. So now we're at nine. And now um, we have four triangles per here. Okay, for each of these triangles, each one gets split into four. So where we had one, two, three, four triangles, now we have um, 16. We don't have it in here. Okay, but we would need to divide by how many little triangles would fit in there to get the area of each one. So if we were to draw in all these triangles, there would be 16 triangles. So then we're going to be doing 256 divided by 16, um, which is 16. And you can kind of see the growth um, factor happening here. So this is just divided by 4. Okay, this is divided by 4 again. So now we kind of have a pattern to follow where this one is multiplying by 3 and this one is multiplying by 3. So now we'll know each of these nine little shaded triangles are going to produce three more each. So we'll do 9 times 3, which is 27. Okay, now we'll have to divide up those triangles another four times. So the area is going to get divided by four again. So 16 divided by four. Then we have 27 times three. So we'll get 81 here and we'll divide by four again and get one. Multiply 81 by three again and get 243 little triangles. Divide those each by four again and we get one fourth square inches. Okay, then part B says to graph um, the number of shaded triangles as a function of the step and then separately graph the area of each triangle as a function of the step number. Okay, so we're going to graph these each separately. Um, so I'm just going to kind of sketch out these graphs here. So in this one, we're going to go one through five for the steps. And then we're going to go up to 243. So let me move this down a little bit. So I can extend this slightly. So I'm going to count um, by, let's see, let's do 50s. <clears throat> so this one will be 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. So in step zero, we were at one. So I'm just graphing these. So at step zero, we were at one. So way down here since this is 50. At step two, we were at three, so just barely above. Step two, we were at nine. Step three, we're at 27, which is about halfway to 50. Step four, we were at 81, okay, so not quite to 100 yet. Step five, we were at 243, so not to 250, but pretty close. So here's the graph that this one is creating. So then we'll graph um, the next one. So again, we have steps one, two, three, four, five. And this one is starting at um, an area of 256. Okay, so I'll count by 50s again. So 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. So at step zero, our area was 256. Okay, so at zero, we're at 256, so just above 250. At one, we were at 64, so here's 50. So we're at 64, so, so about here. 
Step two, we were at 16, so not even halfway to 50. Step three, we were at four. Step four, we were at one. And step five, we were at one fourth. So this one's graph, okay, looks something like this. So how are they the same? I would say the same, they both have curves, okay, They because they're not linear, they're not changing at the same rate, but how are they different? Um, the number of triangles is going up where the area, okay, so the area per triangle is going down. All right, the number five says, um, here is a rule to make a list of numbers. Each number is four less than three times the previous number. So when you do four less than three times a number, okay, you have to do the multiply by three to the previous number first, then you subtract four. So four less than three times the number. So in this first one, we're starting at 10. They want us to build a sequence of five, so we're going to need four more numbers. So we're going to take 10 times 3, which is 30, then subtract 4, and we'll get 26. Then we're going to take um, 26 times 3, and we'll get 78. Then we're gonna subtract four, which is 74. Then we'll do 74 times three, which is 222. Subtract four, and we get 218. 218 times three, and we get 654. Minus four gives us 650. Then start with the number one and build out a sequence of five. So um, one times three is three, minus four gives us negative one. Negative one times three is negative three, minus four is negative seven. Negative seven times three is negative 21, minus four is negative 25. Negative 25 times 3 is negative 75, minus 4 is negative 79. Then it says just select a different starting number and build a sequence of five numbers. So you can do whatever you want here. Um, you're just going to multiply by 3 and then subtract 4. So pick any number you feel like. Number six, a sequence starts ne one, negative one. Give a rule the sequence could follow and the next three terms, okay? So maybe you just want to multiply. So one times negative one, okay? So we have one, negative one, and then we're just going to multiply by negative one for the next three numbers. So negative one times negative one is one. One times negative one is negative one. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Then it says give a different rule, okay? So maybe you just saw negative 2 to negative 1 is subtracting 2, okay? So maybe for this rule, you're just going to subtract 2. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Ne negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. And obviously there's multiple other rules you could do for that. That's just two examples.